Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hi, I'm Pastor Marty Ringer, and welcome to another great Sunday service here at St. Mark Lutheran Church. Now, I got a question for you. I know you pray to God a lot. A lot of times we pray to God every day, but how often do you pray for others? Hmm? That's an interesting question. I've had to ask myself that. But today, we're going to talk all about praying for others or bringing other ones to Jesus. So today, I pray that this service and sermon is a blessing to you. In today's scripture, Jesus brings healing to a demon-possessed child and a deaf and mute man. And even in their different circumstances, we are warned against favoritism and prejudice that blinds us to this truth, that everyone matters to God. And so everyone should matter to us. Now, hear the gospel of our Lord, as it is written in Mark, the seventh chapter, starting at the 24th verse down to the 37th. And we say, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet, he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him and she came and bowed down at his feet now the woman was a gentile of seraphonician origin she begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter he said to her let the children be fed first for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs but she answered him sir even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs then he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then he returned to the region of Tyre, and went by the way of Sodom towards the Sea of Galilee. In the region of Decapolis, they brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephaphatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. This is the gospel of our Lord, and we say, Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you always for giving us breath to breathe, Lord God. Lord God, giving us our small blessings that a lot of times we, we take so much for granted. Lord God, I thank you for allowing us to come back to your, to your space here, Lord God, for us to learn more about you, learn more about this thing called life, Lord God. Lord God, I ask you at this moment, Lord God, give me the words to say to your people, Lord God. To inspire them, Lord God, to teach them, Lord God, to motivate them, Lord God, to, con to continue doing good works for you, Lord God. Lord God, I thank you in advance for all of your grace and mercy in your holy name. Amen. So as usual, happy Sunday. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad. Um, today, I got to put a disclaimer. I got to I got to I got to throw in this disclaimer because. I, I want to talk about something that I don't supposed to talk about, but I, I need to talk about it in this context, but I don't supposed to talk about it, especially in this context. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about Jesus, because they always say if you talk about Jesus, you're always safe. So in this context, I'm going to talk about Jesus and you might understand where I'm 
what, how it might apply to where we're at today in this political season. And it, it's interesting because we're always in a political season. And my disclaimer of what we don't do is for for ministers, ministers that do it correctly. We do not talk or preach politics. I'm not going to preach Republican, Democrat, uh, non-Republican or, or, or non-denomination, not non-denomination, but independent. I'm saying basically I, we don't preach on who you should run for or vote for or whose campaign you should get on. Lack of a better word, we say that we supposed to preach in the purple. You have the blue side and the red, and we supposed to preach in the middle because God is always in the middle. But today, but today I want to talk about these situations with Jesus, especially in the book of Mark. Because he, in Mark, Mark is always trying to show the two dualities of Jesus, of being him being divinely heavenly and humanly personable too. And also, in a sense, how they're trying to identify him. And it's interesting how Jesus throughout his scripture in Mark, where they, they call it the Messiah's secret in a sense. Because a lot of times Jesus is doing all of these miracles and then say, don't say nothing about it. Don't tell nobody about this. And for some reason, they, they can't keep their mouth closed from all of the blessings that Jesus has done for them. They can't keep it quiet. They got to tell, tell somebody, you know, uh, uh, about somebody that can save everybody. I don't know. I, I didn't want to go into that song. But here's the situation, especially today. These are... Some situations that Jesus is involved with that shows him being human and divine. And some things in this text today, being honest, it 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 is not always an easy text when we see Jesus in this way. But let's get into the story. Because if you listen to the story, it, it's, it's interesting how it starts off and some people kind of miss the beginning aspect of it. See, the beginning of this, they are saying Jesus is trying to slip away. He's trying to get away to a quiet place. I don't want nobody to know where I'm going. I don't really want to be bothered. I, I'm trying to do a little vacation time. I need a little private time. I need a little bit of time to myself right now. I don't want to be bothered not just with not just with new people. I want to be bothered with the people I know. The, the, the older people. It's like I, I don't take it personal but I don't feel like being bothered. And what happens? They can't keep it a secret. They can't keep it a secret. Everybody knows about Jesus. Everybody knows about Jesus. And he can't get any rest. So now he's in this house. And someone from the other side sneaks in. Someone from the other side of the tracks sneak in. Let's, let's, let's put it in our terms here. One of them old Democrats don't got into the house. And Jesus is up here saying, now what, what, what you what you doing here? In a sense, I, I know who you've been voting for. I know who you who you look up to. I, I know we ain't the same kind of people. Why you why you why you coming to me not now? Let's go back. We'll be getting to like I said, the beginning of this story. Jesus 
is trying to be on vacation. I don't want nobody to know that I'm here. I'm trying to take a break for a minute. I'm trying to be by myself, but y'all still bugging me. And now someone from the other side has even slipped in asking me for an extra favor. And yes, his dialogue at this moment is one of them that people say, I, I. yeah, he said, it. He, he, he said, why would I take from the children and give to the dogs? And they're like, well, did he call the lady a dog? Yeah. Yeah. Frustrated, upset, a little mad, irritated. He might not use the nicest words. Yeah, he human. Sometimes we hear some things on the news and we uh, we want to say those same choice words when we hear about someone on the other side that is doing something that is uniquely wrong or says something that's out of context and we are quick to call them not the best or the nicest names. But see, here's the situation though in this. And I want to kind of make this point kind of clear especially with some of the weeks that we've had in the United States you know with some of the weeks that we've had in the United States that is said that they are at this moment of recording they are 52 weeks in a year and they've been 42 school shootings this year already and we still got a lot more month to, a few more months to go through before we end this year out. Now I'll say it like this: I, I don't care what side of the fence you on, but right now we're preaching in the purple. Because like in Jesus' situation, the mother might be on one side of the fence, and Jesus might be doing something on the other side of the fence for another group of people. But however. The need of a young child is in the purple. The fact that this woman didn't come for her, her own greed, her own need, her own come up. She's there pleading on her knees for her daughter, praying for someone else, asking Jesus, hey, you can call me out my name. You can, you can shut the door on me. I'm going to still knock. Because Lord God, right now, I need, I need a breakthrough. And not for me, but for the one that I care about. Lord God, just... You ain't got to bless me a lot. I take the crumbs of your blessing. I just take the, the crumbs of your blessing. You ain't got to give it to me all. That's what she's saying to Jesus. When Jesus... Is saying, why do I take? And what he's really saying is, why should I take my blessings and these miracles that I'm giving to the Jewish people, the ones that I, the, the, the ones that I came, or the Israelites, the ones that I came, the, the, the chosen people, the ones that I came, I'm supposed to feed them first. Now, after I feed them, then I'll give the word and the blessings to everyone else. But right now, I'm supposed to be feeding them Jesus, regardless of what side she was on, Jesus said, because of this, I will bless her. Go. Interesting, your faith, her faith has healed her daughter. But the demon was removed by the time she got back. After that, here's the interesting, the, the next aspect of the story where it kind of gets interesting in itself, but... Jesus leaves from there and he goes to the next town, the next city, and they bring him a, a man that can't really talk, that, talk very well, speech impediment, can't see, or mute. He's deaf. And Jesus takes him outside the city. And he puts his fingers in his ears and he spits 
And then he puts his finger on his tongue and says open. Kind of goes back to that open sesame. But a fa-fa looking up at heaven saying open. And you know, it's, it's interesting when, if you look at some of the foreshadowing in, 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 in this whole little story, which is very interesting if you really kind of think about why did Jesus spit? Why did Jesus take him outside of the city? If you kind of look at the rest of the story and how everything went, how when Jesus was outside of the city in the Garden of Gethsemane and they came and take him from the outside of the city and brought him inside of the city and this man was kind of blind and they blindfolded him and they put their hands on him and they spit on him. He took on all the sins of the earth all the sins of humans, and he, he took all of it on. And But before the foreshadowing, he did just like the opposite of everything. I'm going to take this man out of the city. I'm going to use my saliva to heal him. I'm going to use my touch to open up his ears and understanding. And they did the opposite because they blindfolded Jesus. And they, I, I don't know if you can hear or see how Jesus was doing the opposite things in a sense. Of saying, I'm, I'm putting on what, I'm, what y'all about to put on me, but I'm doing it in a loving way, even though y'all about to do it in a hateful way. And, and, and I'm showing you where we're going with this. I, I, don't, I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know if any of y'all are feeling or seeing how, how Jesus is kind of foreshadowing what is to come. Foreshadowing what is to, to come because they did that to him. You know, let me say this, you know, Jesus was interesting in this, in this, in this aspect because he's showing that I can heal any which way. I can heal with the touch or I can just heal with the faith. But both of them, both of them, it's interesting how the intersectionary prayer of not caring about this individual person, but, or, or the person that is bringing them to Jesus. If you think about it, the first one, the mother is coming to Jesus for the daughter. The second one, the people brought the man to Jesus for the blessing. Who are you praying for? Who are you going to Jesus for? Who are you thinking about in your prayers? See, we, 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 we did something here in person. We wrote down our prayers. What we really want, what we need in life, what we're asking God for, the situation that we're asking to be delivered from. We, we wrote them all down and what, we're, what we did was we, we came together. We prayed on the other people's prayer. Not praying on my own. Yes, I got my own issues. I got my own things that I want God to answer. But right now, right at this moment, I am praying on the behalf of someone else. I'm sacrificing this moment of time, Lord God, to ask you, Lord God, can I borrow your eardrum so I can ask for a deliverance from my neighbor down the street or my cousin or my... Sometimes we, we, we want to pray for everybody in the church, but we don't pray for the people in our house sometimes. Who are you bringing to Jesus? Who are you getting on your knees for saying, can I just take the crumbs of your blessing so I can take it over to them? If this ain't for me, can I just take the crumbs of your blessing so I can help Sister Sarah down the street? 
Who are you praying for? Who are you lifting up thoughts for? And this ain't about really works. I'm saying we can all do works, you know, to help our neighbor. This is like God's work our hands weekend. So we can do other things for our neighbors, but at the same time, one of the more powerful things that we have that God gave us as a gift is that telephone call called prayer. And who are you calling on the behalf of? You know, when they say, who are you calling on the behalf of yourself or you're filling out this application for somebody else? Whose application or prayer are you putting in the works for? Sometimes just take that moment of time. It says, Lord, what's the most important commandments? Well, love God with all their heart. The other one. Love your neighbor as yourself. Pray for that sister, that brother, for their deliverance. Pray for them. Just, if anything, just for the day. Pick someone. And say, God, can I have your attention on behalf of my sister or brother? Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, for a moment, allow us to not allow us to be the focus of our thoughts. So we are not the focus of the prayer of the day, Lord God. Lord God, today I am asking you to bless the other ones. Lord God, bless the congregational prayers. Lord God, bless the ones that right now are on their knees asking you for a change. The ones that are really hurting, Lord God. They're smiling in our face, but Lord God, crying at home. Lord God, I ask you to answer their prayer. Lord God, I thank you in advance for all of your grace, all of your mercy, and thank you for answering our prayers. Amen. Claimed by Christ and filled with God's grace and hope, let us offer our prayers for the world, the church, and for all people according to their needs. Let us pray. Lord God, we come before you to give you thanks for what you have done for us. We celebrate your name and offer you praise because of who you are. Bless us as we seek to do your will. Give us hope and help us to do all that we can do to spread the good news. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Righteous Lord, remember the leaders of our nation. Give them wisdom and courage to act in their duty and call to serve and not to rule. Let the church be a voice for the poor and act in their behalf. Keep our society always moving in your will and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God of mercy and love, as your son healed the sick and gave sight to the blind, meet the needs of every hurting soul, including those we know personally to be in want, those on our prayer list, and those we lift to you in the silence of our hearts. The prayers of God's people are like an incense offering, an aroma pleasing to God, working its way to the throne of grace. May this prayer be set before you like an incense May the lifting up of our hands be like the evening sacrifice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your great power and compassion in healing people. Help us to trust in you for all of our needs. Lord God, hear these petitions of your faithful people and by your grace, Grant us those things you see that we need. This we pray through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, 
who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. What good is it if we claim to have faith but do nothing to show it? Faith that does not bear the fruit of mercy and compassion is dead. So let us show that our faith is alive and well through our offerings this day. If you have been blessed by this ministry, please bless us in your donations and giving through your online banking, through cash app at dollar sign St. Mark Lutheran, through Venmo, at St. Mark Lutheran Dash Church, or by sending a check or money order to our mailing address, 4137 Washington Road, East Point, Georgia, 30344. Now today, we're talking about praying for other people. But you don't have to wait on other people to come join us here at St. Mark Lutheran Church. We're located at 4137 Washington Road in beautiful East Point, Georgia. And our services start at 11 a.m. Please come visit us this Sunday and we can pray together. Since we are justified by God's grace through faith, let us confirm what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, sometimes it's not all about you. It's about the people that you surround yourself with. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Go in peace and serve the Lord.